Prior to retirement, my dad was a tailor. And as his job as a tailor, he used to take measurements of his clients, waist circumference, their legs, their arms, their inseams, etc., in order to pr produce a piece of garment that their clients were satisfied with. Thing is that bodies do change over time and measurements need to be redone in order to make other pieces of uh, clothing. And that would suit that person for another occasion. I think of pharmacy and cardiology in the same way. Patients' bodies also will change. Uh, their hemodynamics will change usually faster than somebody who's uh, just needs to get their pants resized. So I need to keep up with the patient's uh, information and get as current data as I can to make a good assessment for the patient in front of me at that particular time. If the nurse had only received report from overnight that the patient's lungs sounded clear, and then I happened to go into the patient's room to do like a med history, and all of a sudden the patient's short of breath, am I gonna go and ask the nurse to come in to listen to that patient's lungs in order for me to make an assessment. Especially if the nurse is really busy with two or three other patients, shouldn't I go and do that for myself and make that assessment on my own? I used to get a lot of raised eyebrows from people around me when I wore a stethoscope around my neck on the unit. I've even heard or sort of overheard a doctor, a neurologist in particular, who was talking to a nurse and said, it's kind of strange that a pharmacist is wearing a stethoscope. Hi, I'm Herb, the heart pharmacist. And on this channel, I talk about heart medications and conditions to help people choose and use wisely. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because the focus is not on medications per se, but about my experiences with physical assessment as a pharmacist. It's also going to be different because I'm going to try to do this mostly in one take and not do as much video editing as I normally would for some of my other videos for the sake of time. And I may also look at the computer monitor for a few of my notes from time to time so I don't have to memorize things. So please bear with me. So one of my biggest regrets as a practicing pharmacist was that I did not take physical assessments as seriously as I could have earlier on in my career. And I felt trapped to always having to ask the doctor or the nurse for their assessments for the patients. And I'm sure that I missed out on a lot of good learning opportunities for myself to understand patients better at a visceral level and to understand the intricacies of how these medications that I'm recommending to doctors to give to people actually work and their effects on patients. How confident can I be in my recommendation to change this patient's heart medications if I don't know how to do things like a fluid assessment, um, checking organ perfusion, understanding the hemodynamics and, and respiratory status. And I'm sure that working as a junior pharmacist that there were a lot of times that I've missed things that I just didn't see for myself and I was relying on other people and I've been burned for that before because I was too afraid of being judged of why a pharmacist would need a stethoscope. I used a high workload of having to cover a unit of like 30 to 40 patients as a young pharmacist on a medical unit as an excuse not to do this or practice a skill because I was just simply too busy. Ironically, uh, what ultimately got me more interested was a case where there's a patient on a medicine unit who had C. diff for a few weeks. This patient had LV dysfunction with an EF of about 15 to 20%. And when I checked the patient's lab work, it looked like their kidney function was starting to take a bit of a hit um, and it wasn't going in the right direction. And I suspect it, that it had something to do with maybe the diuresis. As the doctor had kept the patient on the diuresis while they were having C. diff diarrhea, something just didn't feel right. So I gowned up, contact precautions and everything, went in to examine the patient. I didn't hear any crackles. I could not, I definitely could not see a JVP. Although at the time, I'm not even sure if I really knew how. The patient wasn't overly edematous, but he did seem quite short of breath. And in hindsight, it was probably because he was just so tacky and he was just so dry. I thought that he was both intravascular and extravascularly dry from both the diuresis and the diarrhea. If you want an excellent resource on sodium and water assessment, please see the link in the video description below of 
a resource that was created by one of my professors and was actually my residency coordinator about 10 years ago that helped me come up with a recommendation for fluid resuscitation by Dr. Peter Lowen. Anyway, when I went and spoke with the hospitalist about an order for fluid, as I do consider fluid a drug, I got the raised eyebrow, kind of like, who are you? And a rebuttal of, well, well, this patient has heart failure and their EF is 15%. That's crazy. Despite that, I eventually convinced the hospitalist to get a second opinion by a geriatrician. Thankfully, after getting the geriatrician involved, one of the first things he said was, you need to give this guy back some fluid, like, now. So that was one of the turning points in my career when I thought that, okay, perhaps I need to know this better so I can look after my patients better. In terms of my training for physical assessment, I went through the UBC Pharmacy Undergraduate Bachelor Program and graduated in 2011 with the old curriculum where physical assessment was limited to things like, can you check the patient's temperature? Can you do their blood pressure? During my hospital residency though, I was fortunate that I was trained by the now retired Dr. Ed Dillon, who if you don't happen to know, was one of the godfathers of physical assessments in BC. But he's also the father of the defenseman, Brendan Dillon of the Winnipeg Jets, if you follow hockey. He instilled in me the value of not only ascertaining patient's goals of care during their hospital stay as a pharmacist, but the importance of understanding your patients at a clinical level where you can actually touch the patient in front of you. After graduating and working a few years um, and seldomly implementing some of these physical assessment skills, I eventually took a physical assessment course that was available to us. Um, as hospital staff that was subsidized uh, by the College of Pharmacists of BC. They even had a $100 incentive to put towards a stethoscope. So I got mine upgraded from a Littman Classic 2 to a Big Honking Cardiology 3. This is the one that I use almost every day now. And I like it because it just picks up sound better. And I have to say, a lot of the training actually comes from everyday practice. And I've been fortunate enough too that I have excellent doctors around me who are willing to spend the extra time in teaching me how to perform some of these physical assessment skills so I can better care for the patients on my unit. The great thing too is that currently I am the only pharmacist on my unit. So I'm kind of like the continuity with the charge nurses when the cardiologists are rotating every week. So myself and the, the charge nurses can provide a different perspective now that we've kind of been following these patients a little bit longer than they have compared to a doctor who's just seeing them for the first time or just for a few days or a nurse who's just doing a couple day shifts uh, followed by a couple night shifts and covering different patients i get the input and teaching from different cardiologists from different backgrounds for physical examinations and they give me a lot of different tips that i try to implement to make my job a little bit easier like if I'm trying to look for a JVP, I may try to blur my eyes like I'm really, really tired. And sometimes that helps to bring out the JVP. One of the reasons why I do this, in addition to helping improve the care of my patients, is that I will actually remember my patients better. I get a greater sense of fulfillment in my everyday work and a bigger boost of confidence in the way I practice as well. And developing a skill like this also helps me have a better appreciation and gain insight into how the trajectory of care will sort of look like for that particular patient, which has some positive downstream effects in that it can help me plan and prioritize my work accordingly based on level of acuity. Obviously, I can't do this for everybody on my unit, nor should I need to. Uh, there are some patients who uh, don't need this at all because I know they're fine. I've been fairly selective in the patients that I've had to do this for, and it's usually those who are either really acutely ill or very medically complex. And if things don't seem like they're going in the right direction, despite the treatment plan that we've created for them. Now, this may trigger some people, and it's a bit of a pet peeve of mine, 
are the people who on social media who put together medical videos as either nurses, naturopaths, doctors, chiropractors, and they have a stethoscope around their necks, especially those who give false medical information uh, to try to sell a product. Now, if they're not assessing a patient when they are uh, recording the video, I just considered this a piece of jewelry. And it's just for show, for some status as a trusted medical professional that I don't agree with. Anyway, I'm not going to be a hypocrite, so I'm going to put that down. So if you are a doctor or a nurse, please try not to be judgmental when you see a pharmacist on the unit with a stethoscope. They're only trying to bring an additional lens and value to the team and be responsible for monitoring the effects of the medications that we're recommending in order to help our patients. If you are a doctor or a nurse who have really good physical assessment skills, or please share those tips with the pharmacist that you're working with and get them involved so you can see the patients better as a team. If you are a pharmacist, either hospital or community-based, I challenge you to either buy a stethoscope or borrow one from somebody you know who hasn't been using it. Play with it at home. Listen to your own heart and lungs. Listen to your family members' hearts and lungs. Then bring that stethoscope to work and start incorporating it into your practice and seeing your patients. If you're working closely with doctors and nurses, ask them questions. Ask them if they can show you how to do a JVP assessment and then come up with your own approach for examining patients and build upon that. And once you have a good solid approach, don't deviate from it. You may get some looks, you may stir the pot, you may be mistaken as an RT, a nurse, a medical student, or a doctor, but trust me, is one of the things that will make you feel more happy and confident in your own practice. Just make sure that you're making a point to clarify with your patient that you are indeed a pharmacist. If you like this video, please don't hit the like button and don't subscribe, but rather get yourself one of these things or share this with a pharmacist colleague that you know who you think may just need that extra nudge to take responsibility for your patient's medication therapy to the next level. Now go on, put on that stethoscope and remember to say no to drugs.